Now, a very interesting book that's out ahead of Christmas is Unlimited Heartbreak, the inside story of Limerick Hurling. It's safe to say this book has caused a bit of controversy because there are many stories to tell. I'm joined by the book's author, uh, Henry Martin. Henry, uh, before we talk about the actual book itself, you might tell me a little bit about your own background. Well, Oisin, um, I suppose I began writing somewhat by chance, really. Um, it all started with a letter to the uh, examiner about 10 or 11 years ago in response to a Dear Middle Flynn article uh, relating to my own club, Galbley, and the UL football team. And um, I was very weak uh, at English in school, to be honest. But um, over a number of years, um, I started writing various articles, and I was in the Limerick Leader there a couple of years ago for a period about six, of six months until I was removed uh, unceremoniously. In Having June read the book, I'm not surprised. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I suppose, and um, a number of um, a number of ex Limerick players and ex Limerick personalities would have approached me over the last maybe two or three years, feeling there was a book in me and feeling that I would kind of I wouldn't be political or I wouldn't be taking sides. I'd lower the cutting blade really where everyone was concerned that it would be balanced you know and uh, basically I suppose I kept chipping away and chipping away and eventually I snapped last November and I decided to start the book And why specifically did you write the book? Well I suppose as a primary teacher looking for work I felt it might help me get into a permanent position but um I felt, I suppose, that I, this, there was a story of Limerick Hurling to be told, number one. And I felt, number two, that there was an awful lot of stuff there that maybe needed needed to come out of the closet and maybe to help Limerick f- Hurling move forward. Maybe put an end to all the controversies. Um, maybe use it as a template to leave the past behind and use it as a springboard then to advance forward into a new Limerick, you know, a Limerick without controversy and a Limerick where we could uh, compete and win all Ireland's. Did it meet much op- opposition? Very good question, Oshin. It has met an awful lot of opposition. From um, whom? Well, uh, the county board have not acknowledged it in any way, shape or form. I was uh, removed from Bruff one day. Um, I had permission got from You're the Bruff You're a bit Club. of a Salman Rushdie now amongst Limerick, aren't you? Amongst Limerick county board officials. Well, Salman Rushdie went into hiding for less. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what was their big problem with it? The truth is told, I suppose, really, you know, um, people don't like the truth. Um, it's not me telling the story. It's first hand accounts from the people involved. Every big name uh, in Limerick Hurling over the past number of years are interviewed and there are first hand accounts from those in the book. They tell the story. They tell it as they saw it. And it doesn't make comfortable reading for some people, you know, especially if, if proper practices weren't adhered to up along through the years. Did you try to hear from both sides while writing the book? Did you try and get the county board side of the oh, story? Oh, there, there are a number of county board and ex-county board officials interviewed in the book. And uh, there were a couple that I did approach who weren't willing to comment. So I could never be accused of not of not chasing both sides of the story, so to speak, you know. And in a way, it's a pity there, there were two particular ex-county board officials who uh, didn't comment. And I suppose they might have added an awful lot more value even to the book had they commented. What value would they have added? What were you looking for? Well, you would hope that maybe they'd provide some justification for their role in some of the things that occurred. For instance, the 20 questions in 1996 involving Tom Ryan. And there have been other controversies. Uh, Dave Keane being shafted as Limerick manager in 2003. Um, I, it would have been nice to get uh, the first-hand account from the key county board officers involved in those, you know. You mentioned many of the individual conflicts there. We might come back to some of them in just a few moments, but why is Limerick Hurling so full of conflicts? I mean, you read the book and it, it's not just a recent thing. It's not just something that's happened in the last 20 years. It seems to have been there forever and ever. Well, I suppose I was just going to say it there. If you go to the very first chapter in the book, you'll see that um, Paddy Clossy, the centre-back and the great team of the 30s, um, and the Mackies had their disagreements through uh, rows in club games and things like that, and they weren't talking to one another when they were playing for Limerick at the time. And it just seems to be something that's inherently bred into Limerick people, you know? And that seems to be reflected, I suppose, in the current troubles in Limerick City. But, but um, it doesn't seem to be there with the rugby fraternity. But you see, Munster rugby team is not a Limerick rugby team. It's it's a Munster rugby team. If there's a pitch invasion at Tormund Park, there's a huge number of people from Cork and Kerry and all the, all the other Munster counties, particularly Cork. And there's a huge Cork element in the Munster rugby team and a huge Cork element in the Munster rugby support. Mm. Whereas in Limerick, it's, 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 it, it seems to be inherent in Limerick, you know, up along through every decade, through every year. And... Um, you know, they're just constant conflict. And it's something we really need to work on, you know. And even if people don't get on, to, to work together for the good of Limerick and 
put their differences temporarily to one side, you know. You're listening to News Talk. It's Oshin Langan with you here on Extra Time as part of the Saturday Sports Show. We're talking with Henry Martin, author of the book Unlimited Heartbreak, the inside story on Limerick Hurling. Halftime still in the Barclays Premier League between Aston Villa and Manchester United at Old Trafford. And Villa lead 1-0 in that game. Agbon Lahore with the goal in the first half. Uh, just to let you know that Sean Byrne has crossed over for a try against the Clanetley Scarlets in Wales. It's now 22-0. There's 29 minutes gone in that game in the Heineken Cup. In the other game in Leinster's pool at the moment, London Irish leading against uh, Breve. The score there at the moment is 12-0, but Leinster have got three tries already. They're just one try away from a bonus point and it's uh, Leinster who lead by 22 points to nil. Sean Byrne kicking well, by the way, in the absence of Jonathan Sexton. He's about to take the uh, conversion attempt from just outside the 22. This to add two points to Leinster's lead. There doesn't appear to be any real breeze. He runs up and strokes it with the right and I've put the commentator curse on him because he's dragged it wide. Leinster lead by 22 points to nil. Leinster they're on their way, it appears, in the Heineken Cup. They've got their groove back. 22-0, they lead with a half an hour gone. Still 1-0, by the way, to Villa at Old Trafford. They're just about to start the second half. With me in studio here on News Talk is Henry Martin, uh, author of the book Unlimited Heartbreak, the inside story of uh, Limerick Hurling. And Henry, we said we'd talk about some of the individual conflicts uh, in Limerick Hurling. And that's what we'll do now. Tell me about the 20 questions. The 20 questions, <clears throat> they're published in the book. Uh, they're plain to be seen for everyone to read. And um, Tom Ryan must be the only manager in the history of hurling to have to face such trivial and such, I suppose, idle, gossipy questions, if you like, you know. And after losing an All-Ireland final, any any manager would be downbeat. This, this was in 1994. This was 1996. The, 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 or 96. The Wexford game, yeah. Okay. And uh, imagine after losing the All-Ireland and facing in then to a series of questions like that before you at a county board meeting. What were some of those questions? Um, were the girls needed uh, what was the role of Dave Mahidi the girls refers to um, a couple of girls that Dave Mahidi had as students who, who were on work experience at the time Dave Mahidi is one of the most respected trainers in as far as sports are concerned and as regards UL and the National Coaching and Training Centre is concerned and he's been heavily involved with Munster Rugby and uh, soccer and a number of sports and um he 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 actually left as trainer of the Limerick hurling team. Limerick would be privileged to have Dave Mahidi, and he left after that. And um, Limerick probably lost out big time in subsequent years because of that. You know, and he'd be a big figure in not only GA and other sports, but international sport really. You know, one of the things that's mentioned in the book by one of the former players is that the Limerick team didn't really sit down after they lost the '94 final two years previous under granted a different manager, and maybe that really hurt them in 96 as well and going on from that Oh that was the same manager Tom Ryan would have been the manager in 94 and course, in 96 yeah. um, Well um, to Damien Quigley actually made that he felt it needed to be addressed as a group and that it wasn't addressed as a group um, I suppose there's for and against if something isn't addressed and you win in All-Ireland the best thing that ever did was not to have the incident or not to have the awful game discussed openly um, if it was addressed and you won the All-Ireland addressing it was the best thing in the world I suppose when you lose two All-Irelands in three years I suppose a number of different angles and you often wonder if this was done differently or if that was done differently um, I suppose Mike Houlihan alluded to it in the book he said that X factor to Liam Griffin took the Wexford players off the bus at the Wexford Wicklow border and they walked across the border into, in, into Wicklow uh, on the way to Dublin for that match and something, sometimes something extra. Now it may be overstated, but sometimes it seems to. You, you hear all those stories when you win all Ireland's, but do the, what is the effect to have? You don't know, you know. What about Dave Keane? He won three hundred twenty-one All Ireland uh, titles with Limerick, but it just didn't work out for him at senior level. Why was that? And and does it kind of sum up the problems that have always been there with Limerick hurling? Well, Dave Keane's uh, trainer, Pat O'Callaghan, um, basically summed it up, I suppose. It was like, if you remember before Ireland won the Grand Slam, there was always the perception that the Munster players didn't integrate well into the Irish setup, And Pat O'Callaghan, his trainer, felt that uh, in the book that uh, maybe the under-21s didn't integrate well with the established senior players at the time. Now, it was widely known, and it's in the book, that... Um, Pat O'Callaghan uh, was asked to depart as trainer. Dave Keane was asked to get rid of Pat O'Callaghan as trainer. And um, Dave Keane stood by his man, understandably. And uh, the county board then uh, basically, I think...